welcome to my channel. Welcome to today's video. Today is going to be another episode in my Shop My Stash series. So that's a series I do every month on my channel where I go over products that I've been using for the last month and talk about them, what I think of them, if I'm going to keep them in my collection or declutter them. And then after we do that, we go to my makeup drawers, which are behind me, and pick out new products for the next month. So if that sounds good to you, give this video a thumbs up, subscribe, stick around. I do upload videos twice a week on Sundays and Thursdays. And with all that out of the way, let's get started talking about the products I've been using for the last month. So let's kick it off with primer. I have two primers here. The first is the By Terry Hyaluronic Hydro Primer, so a more moisturizing primer. And then I have a more gripping primer. This is the Milk Hydro Grip. So I was hoping to almost finish these up, did not get as far as I wanted, but this I've used before, I've had in a shot by stash, and man, this lasts a long time. You really don't need a lot. This is just a little sample size, and you can see like I haven't really even made a dent in it, and I have another one of these in my collection. I think they were like a 100 point perk with Sephora, so I ended up grabbing them. I do really like this product. I think it works really well, but I don't think I would ever purchase a full size just because I know that it would go to waste. If they sell a mini, that would be more my speed, but I can't just see myself purchasing this because I don't wanna waste my money, and I know that I could never get through full size of this. Hopefully they do sell minis or even during holiday, I'll see if they kind of usually do sets and that's when I would pick this up again once I finish my two that I have already. And the By Terry one, this is a good primer. It's nothing extraordinary. It's just a moisturizing primer. I've talked about this before in other videos, but hydrating primers just aren't my favorite. I kind of feel like they all do the same. It's just a little bit extra on top of your moisturizer. I have normal leaning dry skin, so if you have very dry skin, I could see how a hydrating primer would be beneficial to you. But for me, it's just an extra step that's not necessary in my routine. I still want to use this. I still have a lot of hydrating primers to get through, but it's not something I plan on having just a whole bunch of to choose from. Maybe just one hydrating primer and that's it. So I'm trying to get through this. I did also bring in, we're going to go out of order here, this By Terry Hyaluronic Powder. These came in like a little holiday set, I think last year. So it came with the primer, it came with the pressed powder, and then it came with this in the loose powder. I do prefer the pressed powder over the loose powder, and I love this little mini. I mean, I am very light-handed when it comes to my makeup, so having just a small size like this just for my under eyes is perfect. I've used this quite a bit. This might even be my third time pulling it into Shop My Stash because I don't have too many under eye setting powders, and I still, like, you can still see the imprint in it. That's how light-handed I am. This is going to last me a very long time and I'm hoping just like the milk that they sell a mini in this because a full size it'll expire before I can even get through it. Now that I've done primers let's do concealers. So I have two traditional concealers here and then one under eye corrector. The under eye corrector is the Becca under eye corrector and here's what it's looking like. I usually just try to see how much progress I can get on this. I only have two under eye correctors and that's this one and the Benefit. I do prefer the Benefit. This one is a little bit emollient, but it still works great. I still like it. If I hated it, I would have decluttered it by now. So this works really great and I'm happy to just really really start to see a dip in this. The two traditional ones I have, so I have the Kosas Revealer Concealer in the shade 03W, that's this one here, and then the Age Perfect Radiant Concealer in, what shade is this? 2110 Nude Beige. I'm starting to see some progress on this one. It's getting down there. This one also, I think it's like right about here, can kind of see it, but I used it earlier today. 
Everything that I'm wearing on my face today is always listed in the description box below, but since I use this, it kind of, the line where it was kind of went away. Both of these are really great concealers. I purposely brought them in because I knew I loved them and I wanted to get great use out of them. This one has a little bit more coverage than this one, and this shade's a little bit off, so I did reach for this a little bit more, but both of these are really great. This L'Oreal one is very, very radiant, so if you don't like a radiant concealer, this one is just not for you. I would say this Kosas one is a great just everyday concealer that I would recommend to any skin type, whereas this one, I think you have to really like a radiant concealer to enjoy this. And I do really like this one. I think it's it's a great concealer. You just, you have to like that radiant look. Let's talk about the foundations that I pulled. So I only pulled in two and that's because last shot my stash, which I will link above there, I had five and that was just way too many for me to actually get my thoughts on. So I only grabbed two this time. And the first one is the Kosas Revealer Foundation. I have the shade 190, I think, yes, 190. And then the Wet n Wild Photo Focus Foundation in Soft Beige. I pulled in this foundation specifically because I knew I wanted to pull in the concealer. And this one has been just a roller coaster ride for me. I tried this out in my Full Face of Kosas Beauty and I didn't love it at the time. I think it was just the combination of products that I used with this. It was very heavy, very cakey. This is the foundation that I'm wearing today and I love it so much more. The trick to this foundation is really, you just need to use a tiny, tiny bit. And I even use a sponge, so that's gonna shear it out more. I mean, let me show you how much I use today. I used like this much. So that just gives you a more natural finish. And I find that that's the only way I can get this to play well with others. If I just use even a full pump, then it just looks too heavy. It settles into my lines really easily, especially once I powder. This foundation just doesn't like powder if you have too much on your skin. So my trick to this one, if this was also one you were really excited to try, because I was, I love that concealer and I was really excited when this came out. Just make sure to use a little bit less than you've been using, even less than you think you're gonna need and just kind of dot it around your face, blend it out with a sponge, and it gives a really beautiful natural finish. It's not too radiant, it's not too matte. I really like this now that I figured out how to use it. And then for the Wet n Wild, this is a solid foundation. I recommended this in my top five fall foundations. I'll link that video above, but this is just a great medium coverage, dependable foundation, and it's like $6. You really, you can't beat the price. I don't necessarily love that it's a doe foot applicator like this, or paddle, I guess this is not a doe foot, it's more of a paddle, but there are worse ways of applying foundations. I really, really hate the dropper style of application, so I can get over the, the paddle. It does smell just a little bit like paint, but for $6, how many, how many cons can we really let slide? So if you're sensitive to scents, you won't like this, but it does dissipate once you put it on your skin. You can really control the coverage with this, I really like. So again, I'm using it very sheer. I'm kind of just dotting it over my face, blending it out with my sponge. But if you wanted to build this up, it still looks great. It does not get cakey once you build it up. I think that this is just a really versatile foundation that's great all year round. I forget about it a lot because I tend to reach for my more expensive foundations just wanting to get my money's worth. But when I use this, I can't believe I even buy those expensive foundations because this one does everything that I need it to do. I already talked about the pressed powder that I used, but this was the loose powder that I chose for this month. This is the Makeup Forever HD Skin Twist and Light, and I have the shade 2 Medium. So it has like three different colors, a green, kind of like a coral rust, and then a more skin tone color with a hole in the middle, and then you twist the base and a product comes out. 
So I did a first impression on this video. I also ranked this in my ranking series that I do every month or two where products that I did a first impression on, I kind of just give my thoughts on them once I've tried them a little bit more. And this was number two, I want to say in that video. I will I'll also link that video above. I really like this powder. It's undetectable on the skin. It's very light. It's finely milled. I haven't found a powder that I've loved so much since the Hourglass came out. That was really just my ride or die powder that I've always used. And I really, really enjoy this. The only thing is that now that I've used it quite a bit, twisting it is becoming more and more difficult. So I just gave it a full twist and you can see like no product came out. Like I'm not, I'll even turn it upside down. Like no product came out. So it's very difficult now. And see, now product came out. Now that I twisted it again, you can see a little bit more. Just, it's unreliable. The packaging, they need to just work on. It's a great concept. I like that you can twist it to just get a little bit of product. It's not so messy when you use it. That's my number one pet peeve with powder is just when there's nothing to contain it and it goes everywhere. I don't like that. I don't think anyone likes that. So A plus for innovation. I know that Oma Beauty also has a powder like that. Just it needs to just be perfected because it's starting to get tough to turn. And, you know, I still have quite a bit of product in here to go through. So I just worry that it's going to be unusable while still having a product in it. Other than that, I love this powder. It again is just it's number one powder to me over the hourglass. And that one I've loved for years and years. So to say that this beats it is really saying something. I think that a lot of new products came out that really just overshadowed this. And this is something that you don't wanna skip on. Now let's talk about complexion products, bronzer, blush, and highlight. So we're gonna do bronzer first cause that's what I think I have the most of. I picked all my Charlotte Tilbury bronzers. I have three. So the first is the Hollywood Contour Wand. I have the shade Fair Medium. I have the Beautiful Skin Cream Bronzer in the shade Medium. And then I have the Airbrush Bronzer in the shade Medium as well. So powder, cream, and contour. Out of all three of these, I think that the contour is still my favorite. It's the oldest, but this just really is a product on its own that speaks for itself. I've had this for quite a long time and it's still lasted me and I've used this quite a bit. So I know that a lot of people complain about the packaging. They don't like the applicator with the little fluff ball on it, but I don't mind it. I find it easy to apply. Yes, like it gets a little bit unsanitary. I just try not to think about that, but I find that it lasts a lot longer. If you're really heavy handed with makeup, maybe it's not gonna last you as long, but I am not. This has lasted me like a good three years and it's still going strong. I mean, it's definitely getting down there, but this is something I will absolutely repurchase. It's probably one of my favorite contour products. Love this. Then for the powder and the cream. So I did do a first impressions on this. And then I did rank it. It's probably in my video with my Makeup Forever or one of those. You can always check out my playlists. I'm pretty good about keeping that updated. And I didn't really like this when I first tried it. And I really didn't give it the love that it needed to get to really just find out how to make it work for me. A lot of the times, you know, like we have bad products and there are going to be bad products, but sometimes you just need to change the way that you typically do things. And that was the case for this. My biggest gripe with this is that I got the shade medium in this. And then I also have the shade medium in the powder bronzer. So the powder bronzer came out first. So naturally I was like, okay, well, if I got medium in the powder, I'll probably need medium in the cream. And the difference in shade is staggering. So here's the powder and here's the cream. You can see the powder like almost doesn't even show up on the back of my hand. And the cream is just so much darker. I wish that she had made that more clear on her website. I'm glad that Charlotte Tilbury is starting to give more depth in her products. 
However, just I wasn't aware. Had I known, I would have picked up the shade Fair, but I can still make this work. It's just limit. I prefer something that's a little bit lighter that I can build up and have more control over. This, I just have to be very, very careful that I don't get too heavy handed or it's just way too much. Going back, this bronzer is solid, the pressed one. I love this. It's almost even too light for me. It's a really great bronzer. I love that it's refillable. I think that brands that are starting to have refillable packaging is huge. I, I really, really like that about this. And the cream, just to conclude, is that I love this now. I actually went into this thinking like, okay, I'm gonna give it one last shot and I'll declutter it if it's just too dark, eventually get the fair and just continue to bitch about it. But I actually, now that I figured out how to use it more, I really like this. And I think just getting past the top layer has also helped. It's more just warmed up because it's very clay-like. I don't have a lot of cream bronzers that feel like this. It feels like dry clay, but now that I've worked through the center, it has more of a just creamy feel to it. Whereas the outside here, again, is like, it's almost like almost dried clay. That's the best way I can describe it. You can even see. So like here is the center and then here is the outside. You can see how much more pigment it picks up. So now that I've like warmed it up and used it more, I'll continue to use this. I really like it now. Just at first I didn't and now I do. So it's going to stay. Let's now talk about this. So this is the Tom Ford Soleil Ion Cheek Palette in the shade 02 Warm. It looks like this. So you have a blush, a highlight, and then four eyeshadows. These are the eyeshadows that I'm wearing today. And I pulled this in because I was pretty sure I was gonna declutter it. And now that I've used it more, because it's been a very long time since I've used it, I just remember when I used it that I didn't like it. And now that I've given it some more love, this is not as bad as I've made it out to be. The blush is really beautiful. The eyeshadows are really nice. I just don't like this highlight. It's almost nothing on the skin. Like it has no shimmer, very powdery yet it's not a it couldn't be a finishing powder and it can't be a highlight it's too strong to be a finishing powder and it's just not enough to be a highlight i don't like it as well as this light shade here this just does nothing it added nothing to the palette i don't like this i like these three shades and i like the blush so am i mad that i spent 150 dollars yes but i will continue to use it since I like a majority of the palette, I'm not gonna get rid of it and try and get some of my money's worth for it. This reminded me to not pick up the other ones of these Tom Ford palettes. They're very popular. They come out every year for holiday. The white suede one, I think is what it's called. A new one just released for holiday right before I did shop my stash. So that's why I pulled this in as well to also just kind of try and remind myself why I shouldn't get that one. I'm glad that I did. I've seen reviews on it. It doesn't look that great. And if you're just not gonna like all the shades, there's no point in spending that amount of money on it. In my opinion, money is relative, but for me, I'm not gonna spend that kind of money if I don't like all of the products. So I have this now, it is what it is, but I don't think that I'll continue to even chance purchasing these in the future because they just seem so hit or miss on whether they're good or not. And there's other Tom Ford products that I know are more reliable that I would rather spend my money on. So this is gonna stay, but I wouldn't recommend it and I wouldn't recommend picking up any of the other face palettes. And since I decided to pull in that Tom Ford, I kind of just decided to stick with the Tom Ford theme, kind of have like a Charlotte Tilbury theme, a Kosas theme, Tom Ford theme. So I also pulled this in. This is the Tom Ford Skin Illuminating Powder Duo in 07 Incandescent. It looks like this. It has this beautiful blush and this beautiful highlight. This is worth the money way over this. So this was beautiful. I bought this because Mel Thompson used to rave about it. This was her favorite one out of the two. I convinced myself that my life would change if I got it. And then I purchased this and I was too scared to use it. Not because it was Tom Ford, but because this blush just seemed 
way too dark for me. I was like, there's no way it's going to work for me. It looks like this, but it, once you blend it out, is so beautiful. I don't necessarily go for glowy blushes, but there's something about this that she was right. It is just beautiful on the skin. This highlight is borderline too dark for me, but I can still make it work, especially when you kind of just layer it just a little bit over the blush. Overall, I'm glad I have this in my collection. I don't know if necessarily, you know, I lost all my makeup. I would go out and run and rebuy this, but I am happy that I have it. I'm happy that I finally pushed myself to use it because I just kept looking at it, wanting to use it, but just thinking I was going to have the worst makeup day ever. And I didn't. I was happily, happily surprised when I saw this. And if you can afford it, if you've been looking at it, if this goes on sale at some time during Black Friday, pick this up. I don't think you'll regret it. The formula is fantastic. I don't know what other shades there are in this. I might just take a look and see if there's more of an everyday because this one definitely makes a statement. But fantastic. Love these. I'm for sure keeping that. And then since we had those two kind of face palettes or powder duos, I was missing a cream blush and a cream highlight. Those both had blush and highlight in them. So I pulled in a cream blush and a cream highlight. The blush is the Tarte Beaches and Cream Beach Cheeks Cream Blush. So it comes in this like cute little clamshell packaging, very tart. And then here is what the blush looks like. It is very bright and since I even worked through the layers, like you can see almost like a ring, just how bright it is. Here's what it looks like. But I almost use this always as a base and then I would go over it with another blush. I never really just wore this blush on its own. It's just a little bit too bright for me. I'm gonna keep it, but I have a feeling that come my next declutter, this is not something that I'll keep. The, the formula is okay. It's not a bad product. It's just not something I can see myself reaching for all the time. So I'm gonna see how much more I do reach for it, see if it's something that I remember to use, and if not, it'll probably just go. And for highlight, I have the Marc Jacobs Do You Do Drops Coconut Gel Highlighter. I've had this for quite a long time. If you watch my highlight declutter, this was in my maybes. I was on the fence of almost decluttering it. And I'm so, so happy that I didn't. This round had a lot of wins in it. This is what it looks like. This is a very heavy swatch. This was so beautiful on the skin. You really need a little, like I put this much on the back of my hand and then I would just kind of pick it up and apply it that way. If you, you, I mean, other than that, it would just be too much. You have to really, really control how much product you're using to get like a nice sheen. But this is really pretty. I'm glad that it comes in like a bottle like this. It's multi-use. So if you wanted to like spotlight, highlight on your body, you could do that with this as well. I know there was another shade that was just a little bit more bronzy, but I'm not really sure what's going on with Marc Jacobs. If they're going out of business or if they're rebranding. I don't think anyone's sure. I mean, if you are, leave me a comment below. I fully went into this Shop My Stash thinking that I was gonna declutter this and I was pleasantly surprised on how much I just enjoyed this product. If you have this, this is just a reminder to go get it out of your collection and re-fall in love with it like I did because I'm so happy that I didn't just declutter it without trying it first. I would have been missing out on just a really stunning highlight. All right, we have eyeshadows and then we're done talking about all the products here. Let's go over my Tom Ford quads first. Like I said, I picked out most of my Tom Ford products. So I have two quads. One is 03 Nude Dip and then I have 05 Silver Topaz. So here is what Nude Dip looks like. And this has the wet to dry formula. And then Silver Topaz looks like this, very similar color story. However, this is just his normal formula. It does not have the wet to dry formula. Let me just hold these up side by side. Move those little applicators. So here's what they look like. Both like a cool tone color story. I do prefer cool tone eyeshadows. This one is just to me more 
a little bit. You could use a day or night. And this one is more, I would just use this for an evening look. It just has those darker tones in it. Or I would have to pull in like a complimentary palette to really make it more daytime appropriate just for my preferences. I am going to have to just agree with the masses that his wet dry formula performs so much better than just his regular eyeshadows. I still enjoy this palette. I still love using it. I think I wore it. I have like weird memories, but I'm pretty sure I wore this on Christmas time in the Philippines. And I remember that because it was my last Christmas before we lost our a little Italian Greyhound goose. So I have like a really nice photo of all of us at Christmas with my dog and my boyfriend. But I remember I wore this palette and I felt really beautiful wearing it. So I'm going to keep both of these. Just I tend to reach for a new dip a little bit more. I really, really want the body heat one, but I have so much eyeshadow to go through. I'm going to I'm going to wait on that and see like if it's on sale for like a really great price, I might pick it up, but I'm really trying to just slow down my makeup purchases. So it's gonna have to wait. Hopefully it doesn't get discontinued, but Body Heat is on my list. I heard that is one of his best ones. I have two more eyeshadow palettes to go over. These were a little bit more special. So I wanted something a little bit more every day, something that I could just wear lightly if I wanted on no makeup makeup days. So I pulled both of these in. These are the Bare Minerals Gen Nude. I have the Neutral and I have the Rose. So let me open these up for you. All right, so we have Neutral here and then we have the Rose. A little bit warmer, I would still say more neutral, hence the name. And then the Rose is a little bit more on the cooler side. This is what I prefer. I just like those modern Renaissance tones. I don't gravitate towards those. And I like both of these. I think that they're both really solid palettes. The formula is great. I, I wouldn't buy these full price. I just think they're too basic for that. I want to say they're like $30, but that's off the top of my head. I could be completely wrong. And I don't think it's worth that price. But on sale, these are these are really great. They're travel friendly. I like that it has a really great mirror in here. If you have a large collection like I do, I don't think this is something that you need to run out and grab. However, if you're looking for one solid dependable eyeshadow palette, like maybe if you're one of those people who gets ready in their car before work, I am not, but you would probably really like this palette just on how petite it is, how great it would just fit into a little travel makeup bag. I could see it being really handy for that. I do prefer the rose one a little bit more over the neutral. It's just the tones I prefer, but this is definitely for lighter skin tones, darker skin tones. I don't think that it would show up, but you have really great like in the crease shades. You have a shimmer, you have a liner here if you want. Overall, great palette. Highly recommend just don't pay full price for these. And that's going to wrap up talking about all the products that I've been using for the last month. So now let's do the fun part and go pick out the products that I'll be using for the following month. All right, here we have primers. Let me just actually move this down a little bit more. Um, I feel like I've gone through a lot of these, so it's kind of tough. I don't think I've used this. So this is the Tula Face Filling Blurring and Moisturizing Primer. Perfect, it's moisturizing and blurring. So I think that maybe this is gonna be the only one that I choose. Well, actually, okay, no. We're gonna choose that one and then we're also gonna pull in my Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter. I have the shade three. So let's pull in these two because this is kind of more of a highlight primer. And then I have a moisturizing and blurring primer in one. So let's do these two. For foundation. I've been thinking about this a lot. So I am filming this a couple days earlier than I normally do, only because when this video is supposed to go live, I usually film it and then edit it, put it up right away. So that way I'm really getting a full month of the products that I'm using. However, this month I am getting surgery and I should be getting surgery on my second foot. I'm getting surgery on both feet done and they're both 10 days apart. 
So I know I'm not going to be in like the best of moods to be putting makeup on every day. So for foundation, going back to it, I think that I'm going to just pick something easy that I love. And that is the Beauty Blender Bounce Skin Tint. I have the shade Light 4. So I'm going to pull this one in. And then just because this was right next to it and I haven't used it in a while, this is the MAC Studio Water Weight foundation. I also really love this and I haven't used it in a while. I have the shade NC20. So I'm going to give these two a shot, but I can't guarantee how much I'm going to be wearing makeup in the next month just because those are going to be my biggest months of recovery. So let's just go with these two. Nice, simple, easy, and light. For concealer, so I have all my concealers here. These are all discontinued foundations, just so I know for reference when I do videos. But we're gonna switch out my Becca for the benefit as far as under eye concealer. And then I'm only gonna pick one, I think, and it's gonna be the Dior Backstage Concealer. I have the shade 2N, so these are just the two. Keep it easy, make sure that I'm actually using the products and I can gather thoughts rather than only using it once or twice. And then it's really hard to speak on products at the end of the month when I do that. So this is the concealer we're gonna use. Now for powder. Um, again, I think I'm just going to choose one because I don't want to overwhelm myself. I think it's between this Dior one or this Guerlain one. I think I've used this Guerlain one before in a shot my stash. So I haven't used this Dior no powder, 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 no powder in a shot my stash yet. So let's use this one. I'm choosing this because it has some coverage. And since the foundations that I chose are lighter weight, it'll kind of give it like a full medium coverage if I want it to, or I can just skip the powder and keep it light coverage. So let's use this powder. Here we have face palettes, palettes just that aren't in one category. So, you know, they might have a bronzer and a highlight or they might have a highlight and a blush. It just is not something that I can put in just my bronzer drawer, just my blush drawer, etc. That's just how I have it organized. And I already know which one I wanted to pull. This is the Charlotte Tilbury Nudegasm Face Palette. So this has a bronzer, a contour, a blush, and a highlight. And I'm gonna be honest, because I think that this has all three products, I think we're gonna skip bronzer, blush, and highlight and just stick with this face palette, really just focus on it. If anything, I can always pull from my collection. I don't mind doing that during Shop My Stash. Just really try to focus on the products that I choose and give myself a wide enough selection where I don't have to go back into my collection. I'm fine doing it. I also have my project pan that I'm working on. So if anything, I can pull products from that if this is not enough, but this is gonna cover complexion. On to eyeshadow. So I have quite a few drawers of eyeshadow. I just knew I wanted to pull this one in. This is the Tartlet in Bloom. Mine is a very, very old at this point, but it still smells really good. But these are easy everyday tones that I can just grab for, not think about. I was only gonna pull from this. I had this in my eyeshadow declutter and I was kind of iffy on it just because it is so old. And I kind of wanted to give it a last hurrah. I'm gonna just see how it performs. But now thinking about it, I think that I'm going to grab from my singles drawer. I don't know if you can see, but I think I'm also just going to grab both of my Oryx. So I have Defiance and I have Temper. So I'm just also going to go for these and have a little bit something extra if I need some sparkle. Last up, we have lips. So normally I pull nine lips and that is just not going to happen this round because I know myself, I won't be able to wear nine in one month. So I think maybe I'll just pull some easy ones. Let's pull this NARS lip glow in orgasm. And what else should I pull? 
just so I have something um, that's gonna have some color. Just thinking out loud here. I'll also pull this Lawless Forget the Filler in Velvet. It's just a plumping lip gloss, but it has a little bit of a tint to it. We'll just grab the clear one too while we're at it. So that way we have three lip products, two with color and one without. I just, I can't commit to nine knowing that I'm gonna be in bed. Like I, I'm not supposed to walk at all. So it's gonna be hard for me to do my makeup at least for the first 10 days. So let's just stick with three products and not overwhelm myself. All right, so then here's a little overview of everything that I'll be using. I know it's a lot smaller than normal, but just to repeat myself, I want to make sure that when I give reviews at the end of the month, when I do this, that I can, I actually use the products and I know what I'm talking about. I'm just unsure of what I'll be able to commit to in the next month. It's not a serious surgery. I'm just getting like bunions removed on both of my feet. So it's not anything super serious. I just don't, I can't anticipate how I'm going to be feeling. So if you could send me good vibes in the comments, that would always be appreciated. I'll probably be responding to comments a lot more than normal because I'll be having a lot of free time on my hands. When you're seeing this, I'll have already had the first foot done and it'll be like a day or two before my second foot. So I'll, I just appreciate good thoughts because it's my first surgery. I'm a little bit nervous, but that is where I'm going to leave you all. Please like and subscribe, and I will see you all in my next video. Bye, everyone.